All right, so M and DR, no name camp. So M and DR, what brought you to this moment now? Um, I think this moment, well, when I think about my history of music, I mean, I think I'm, it's kind of boring. Like all I've done is music. You can wiki it, check it out, whatever. Like, like not that exciting. I'm here now. She's so modest. Well, <laughs> because I think by my love and obsession and, and joy that music brings to my life. Like it just, I, I feel like I get to you. Someone really great said that to me once. We, you get to you. And I was like, that's right. We get to, we get to be creators and like, and that's like something to really honor and, and realize there's so many creative, amazing people that for whatever reason, it doesn't get to be their focus in their life. I'm sure it's their outlets, but this is like a, what I get to do. So I get to, right. And I think there's also, even though I'm a hopelessly positive person with a sassy vibe, <laughs> But, uh, you know, probably a bit of frustration because there's um, it's also just like a vast inequity. And in terms of the rooms we're seeing in the music industry, I mean, uh, it, I think the, the statistics right now are less than 5% non-male uh, producers working wow. on records um, that are on charts. So, mm -hmm. and whether we like it or not, you know, we are in an extremely competitive industry so um and that's just how the industry is f formed whether that's good or bad or whatever that's just the present day of it All right and those are other things to tackle if needed to be tackled and are being tackled but mm -hmm. my interest is really like we're missing this entire perspective this entire viewpoint artistic viewpoint is just gone and in an era where there's so much music and I think, Trey, like, we could agree at times, like, it sounds so. a lot the same, right? Yeah, definitely. Where is this fresh voice? And to me, I was like, I just think it's in everyone that hasn't got to you. Right. So that really inspired me. I talked to my team, and, and, and it's something I did silently. I didn't tell anyone <laughs> that this year I was just like, what would happen to my career financially and like continuing this is very competitive industry um if i just chose not on instagram but just <laughs> chose to work primarily with non-male creatives and artists and and if every room i was in was had to be over 50 percent non-male mm -hmm. and it's been like probably the biggest one of the biggest years of my life and just like a life-changing year really and Incredible. Uh, and just choosing to do that not telling people um my social media if you know me i fucking hate social media but i love you <laughs> uh but um just putting it into practice amazing and so that brought me here Beautiful. So yeah. I know you've already touched on it a bit, yeah. but I just wanted to go a bit further and ask, why did you put the songwriting camp together with Taylor Parks, yeah. Tiger Spring, and Seeker? Yeah. So, well, first of all, Taylor, um, we met, I think, seven or eight years ago now. And obviously she's, I mean, I saw it from day one with her and the way she spoke about the career she wanted. I mean, I was like, God, I wish I was you when I was 20, like I was just like bumbling around, you know, mm -hmm. um, she knew what she wanted to do and to mogul this in industry and, and the talent level that Taylor has the first time I, I wrote with her. And this was like seven or eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it was some of her first sessions. Wow. Uh, I was blown away. I was like, what is happening? And she told me everything she wanted to do. Like, I think the first day we met and I was like, you're going to do all that. Right. You are insane. And I've watched her become, she's, I don't think there's ever been a songwriter that has had number one songs on three charts, man, woman, insane. anything. 
we've been talking a lot, her and I've been, and she's an executive producer, uh, publisher, uh, all around goat mm-hmm. and mogul. Um, we've been talking about our frustrations with the inequities and in, in rooms. And of course, she's signing and publishing a lot of up and coming new non male producers, um, songwriters. And so uh, I just like hit her up. I was, and we talked about throwing an event like this. And right. so, along with, with Tiger Spring and Seeker, they supported us and we were able to like pull it together and bring everyone to Denmark into a castle. Amazing. Yeah, right? So, why did you call this camp No Name Camp? Okay, so everyone was like, what do you want to call this camp? And I'm like, I hate camp names. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so cheesy and corny. Yeah, like, sure, yeah. But I was like, we should call it something because I think it's really special. Mm-hmm, definitely. Um, and I think like the... What we what we're trying to achieve, and like I humbly say, we're achieving not me, the group effort of everyone, is that non male producers, non male songwriters, are working at the highest of levels. You're so right. And what's happening at at this camp is like second to none of any other camp I've ever been to. It is, it, and I think that's what the industry needs to see that we're able to produce. And teams in in the in management and artists putting out records is that we're here, and like, you may know our names, but collectively we're not. For whatever reason, I don't think it's like a malicious reason why we're not working together. I think you, it's just the industry, and you're just in your groove, and people are working on records, and it tends to be a certain names, which is great. And I was like, what if this was the no name camp? Because these are really going to be records that are going to be coming out, coming out working at the highest level, meaning chart level, productions, songwriting, songs, uh, with people that have probably never collaborated together. And it isn't a fact we're not out here. This is about connecting us together. Most definitely. Yes. Well, you do such a brilliant job having worked with you before of creating a safe space mm-hmm. for people in the room. So just seeing that on a macro level at this camp has been so impressive. And I know I've said it so many times already, but thank you so much. All of us are so excited about the music that we're creating. Yes. And I feel like this movement that you're truly spearheading so tell me about a time in the studio where you felt like you didn't know what to do next, but you were able to overcome that moment. I know every producer, male or non-male, has been in that position. So I'd love just a little insight. Yeah, so this is a question I'm like asking everyone, so I felt like I needed to be asked that yeah. too. <laughs> Your <laughs> turn, hot seat, hot <laughs> take. Well, here in my room, it's every session. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there, there's 20 minutes or, or 30 where I like, in my head, I'm fantasizing about running away. Like I'm having <laughs> runaway fantasies. I'm like, no. And I'm like, this is the shittiest thing I've ever made. No. Where I'm just like, there's zero vibe. Like, <laughs> what is happening? Right. And I'm not joking. I'm like staring in his face being like, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. And then like, <laughs> I'm like, no, you can do this. <laughs> and that happens to me every session. And my sessions are always like, I mean, she's a little busted. She's a little, it's never a little busted. ratchety. Never but she's busted come out ever. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> so I just try to keep it like about fun. Generally, if I bring it back to like, we're making music, this is fun. Right. Like, we get through it. Most and then definitely. I'm like, oh, we did it. We found the path that's like it presented itself. And I'm like, there she is. But I try right. not to fight her. My creativity or the, the collective creative in the room is, is, is embodied in the feminine for me. And I'm like, beautiful. and she presents what needs to happen. And I honor her. And I'm like, yes. I love that. I'm so excited for people to hear that because I feel like more people <laughs> need to do that. I feel like we would be creating songs on the highest level if more people were doing that. Because she'll tell us. Yeah. And if we ignore her, she's like, well. Okay. Well, that's sorry. you. <laughs> Could have listen to me, honey. <laughs> so lastly, what about being in the studio and making music brings you joy? Ugh. 
it's really simple. Like, get to. It's just like creative. I love to make things. So, mm -hmm. so I'm very simple. A simple beast. That's it. <laughs> I get to make things. I just try to honor it. It's such a gift. Mm -hmm. It's such a gift. And I will like go down in flames doing it. Most definitely. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. No name camp. Okay. I'll make some hits Ooh. now. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs>